The effective nuclear charge is defined as the amount or the magnitude of the positive charge from a nucleus of an atom that is actually detected or felt by an electron in that same atom. Let me draw a picture because I think this is easier to explain with a picture. So let's draw, let's draw a helium atom. Helium atom has two protons in its nucleus and two neutrons would be a reasonable number of neutrons. And then in the electron cloud in the n equals one level, there are two electrons. So maybe it would look something like this. The effective nuclear charge is a measure from the perspective of an electron. So let's say this electron right here. It is a measure of how much positive charge this electron can actually detect. So even there, though there are two protons in the nucleus of this atom, this electron may not detect or feel a positive charge that is equivalent to two protons. Because there is some distance between the nucleus and the electrons, the positive charge is a little bit kind of weakened or, or watered down just as a result of that distance. So these electrons are going to feel a little bit less than a full-on two-proton positive charge. And this phenomenon, again, is called effective nuclear charge. Effective nuclear charge is abbreviated either ENC, which stands obviously for effective nuclear charge, or it is abbreviated with a capital Z subscript EFF. -F. So effective nuclear charge depends in part on the distance between the electrons and the nucleus. It also depends on whether or not there are other electrons in between an electron and its nucleus. So let's draw another atom. Let's say now we're going to draw an atom. We're going to add two more protons to the nucleus. And I'll go ahead and add two neutrons as well. So now we have a nucleus that has a positive charge of four. And since we added two protons, we need to add two electrons as well. So we have two protons and two electrons. Now let's think about effective nuclear charge from the perspective of this guy right here. This electron is even further away from the nucleus, so its positive charge is going to be watered down by the distance even more than what we saw for this guy right here. In addition to that, this electron is experiencing a phenomenon that we call shielding. Shielding is when an electron, such as this one right here, is kind of blocked by an electron that exists in a lower energy level. That electron is sitting in between, in the way, of the nucleus and the electron in question. So we're going to define shielding as when we have an inner electron that is blocking an outer electron from feeling the nucleus, the positive charge of the nucleus. Let's draw a periodic table. Well, let's draw a rectangle that will represent the periodic table. So this is going to be my rough sketch of a periodic table. And let's use this periodic table to kind of sketch out the trend of effective nuclear charge. In general, and as a rule, the effective nuclear charge decreases as an atom gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So as atoms get larger and larger and their electrons get further and further away, the effective nuclear charge of those electrons that are so far away goes down, down, down. So the atoms that are down here on the bottom of the periodic table, these atoms that are very large, their effective nuclear charge is actually really small. And when we draw the trend, we actually draw it in terms of the opposite direction. So we say that the effective nuclear charge increases as we go up. And this is because our atoms are getting smaller 
which means that the electrons are closer to the nucleus. So they don't have a hard time feeling the charge. Now, what about if we go this way on a periodic table? So we know that these elements down here are larger than these elements up here. But what if we're just looking at a trend as we go from left to right? And these atoms are all roughly the same size because they're all in the same row on a periodic table. So as we go from left to right, what we see have uh, happening, and we're going to go back to this diagram as well, as we go from left to right, we add protons to the nucleus. So let's put two more protons into this nucleus, and we'll put two neutrons as well, and we add electrons also. As we go from left to right, our electrons don't get any further away. So the distance between the electrons and the nucleus hasn't changed but the strength of the nucleus has changed. This nucleus has had electron or protons added to it. This nucleus has become stronger, which means that it's easier for it to spread its positive charge out, even through the inner electrons to the greater distance. So as we go from left to right, and as we add positivity to this nucleus, the effective nuclear charge increases. So effective nuclear charge increases going from left to right because our nucleus gets more positive and our atom stays the same size. 